Good morning once again. This is Pastor Ephraim Manuel from Sun Valley Foursquare Church. We have our daily Bible study from Tuesday to Sunday. And we are glad to continue in our series, Kingdom Rule. And we are on part 16. Our topic is about sin. Yes, that's our topic. Every problem in this world emanated or originated from sin. Example, the Garden of Eden it was a beautiful garden. You know, they lived there and uh, God said, do not eat of this kind of fruit. But they did. And because they fell into sin, they had this problem. They have to toil the ground and they have to provide for themselves and all that. You know, and a lot of these things that we are experiencing in this world you know, emanated or was caused by sin originally. And the Lord wants us to understand that in His kingdom, you know, it's the same problem. Sin is the same uh, thing. It is the greatest problem in his kingdom but God of course we know is a victorious God and that in our lives the Bible says even though that everyone has sinned we have the privilege of coming back to God being transformed and then we'll have victory against sin and today let's open our Bibles in Genesis chapter 20 verse 9 Genesis chapter 20 verse 9 and it says, Then Abimelech called Abram and said unto him, What hast thou done unto us? And what have I offended thee that thou hast brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin? Thou hast done deeds unto me that ought not to be done. Well, the story, you know, as a background, Abraham moved on from there unto the region of Negev and lived between Kadesh and Shur. In verse 1 of Genesis chapter 20, for a while he stayed in Gerar, and there Abraham said of his wife, Sarah, she is my sister. Then Abimelech king of Gerar sent for Sarah and took her. But you know, the story goes that God came to Abimelech, the king of Gerar, in a dream one night and said to him, You are as good as a dead. Okay. Okay, a dead man, because of the woman you have taken, she is a married woman. That's why in verse 9, you know, we continue the story. This was his words, King of Abimelech's words. He called Abraham and said unto him, What hast thou done unto us? What did you do? What have I offended thee? What did I do that you have done this thing unto me? In fact, you know, King Abimelech, gave favor to Abraham and Sarah. Well, you see here, sin, as for this passage, you know, teaches sin is the greatest problem in God's kingdom. It was a problem in that kingdom. And you will see later on how he says he was an innocent man. You know, he welcomed Abraham and Sarah and he had his good intentions. And yet, you know, because of this sin, because of the lying of Abraham, he had this problem. Well, how can we help solve the greatest problem in God's kingdom? We can help individually and as a group, as a group of believers to solve this greatest problem in his kingdom by understanding these three principles about sin. The Bible, you know, in the original word, Greek word of sin is hamartia. Hamartia means, you know, you miss the mark, like you're playing a dart, and there's a target, you miss the bull's eye target that you should you know, do when you're doing a dart or you're uh, uh, sending an arrow. See, well, this is what happened. We, we miss the mark, we miss the standard of God, or we do not do God's standard. See, the first principle here is this, sin offends others. Sin offends others. It affects others. In verse 9, Abimelech said to Abraham, What hast thou done unto us, and what have I offended thee? Well, God told <clears throat> Abimelech, You are a dead man because of what you have done. It affected him. It affected his kingdom. You know, 
it affected his emotion, his mind, his disposition, so that he was alarmed and he talked to Abraham. This is what sin does to others when we commit it, others are affected. Well, in 2 Samuel chapter 11, 3, 4, and then in verse 15, it's about David. In verse 3, it says, And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness. And she returned unto her house. Mind you, Abimelech did not know that Sarah was Abraham's wife. And yet, David knew at the very start that Bathsheba, you know, was uh, Uriah's wife. In fact, in verse it says, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. Well, in verse 15, he continued because of the intentions of his heart. And he wrote in the letter, saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye from him, that ye may be smitten and die. That was his plan. To totally, you know, get for himself Bathsheba and do away with her husband, Uriah, so that he sent him to battle, and then when it is the time of the hottest battle, he says to his troops, leave him there so that he might die in the battle. See how, you know, Bathsheba was affected. See how she lost her husband. These are the things that sin does as a result. You do think you thought you're only the one affected. But then, you know, you don't think of others who are affected when you do things, you know, when you lie when you don't, you know, uh, give to others what is due to them. In fact, when we don't preach the gospel to others and we know that we should have done so with the opportunity that God gives us, they will go to destruction. And it is on our part, our responsibility, because we lack, you know, this kind of heart or attitude to share the gospel to them and we don't have this compassion. They are affected, and this will cause them to really be, find themselves, you know, in hell. And so, this is the first principle, so that we understand that sin does not only affect us. In the church, if somebody sins, it affects everybody because we are one body. And that's, you know, the thing that I would like to share the next, as we go to our second point. Sin results in consequences on the part of the offender. Not only those around you, but also the offender and the thing that it brings about, you know, as a whole. In verse 9, the second part, it says, you know, in this verse, Genesis chapter 20, And what have I offended thee, that thou hast brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin? See? Not only that King Abimelech was affected, the whole kingdom was affected, and even Abraham was affected. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 15 and 18a, it says, And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David. And it was very sick. In verse 18, it came to pass, the seventh day that the child died. We thought sin, you know, does not have consequences on us and we think we can, you know, get away with the result of what we have done. No. Maybe for a moment, you know, we can get rid of it by way of hiding or we don't notice it. But God is a just God. The Bible says that the penalty of sin, the wages of sin, is death. So every time we sin, we are supposed to die. Or we're supposed to be, you know, even further away from God. And we should receive the consequences. In fact, if not because of God's mercies, not because of God's grace, we would have died long ago. 
because of our sin. And you know that. I don't claim that I'm a perfect man. I too am a sinful man saved by His grace. And if we just acknowledge, you know, what the Bible says, that if we come to Him, you know, we have this kind of privilege to be forgiven of our sins. And not only that, to be empowered to fight against sin. See, there are three things that God does to us. First, He forgives our sins because He paid the penalty of our sins. Secondly, He gives us the power okay, to fight against sin. You now, when you're forgiven, God gives you the Holy Spirit, you know, and, and God gives you the power to say no to sin. Now you have, you are, you know, have a, this, this power. You're powerful to say, you know, I will not do this because I believe that is against God's heart. And thirdly, you know, we are free from the presence of sin. We are free from the penalty of sin. If we are forgiven. We are free from the power of sin. Yes, we can decide against sin. And we are free, you know, from the presence of sin when we face God and will be with Him forever. Well, in this instance, David received the consequences. His child died. Joshua 7, 1, you know the story about Achan and his family. God said, do not touch this accursed thing. And yet, he touched it. He hid it. And so when, when the people of God went to battle, they lost. And Joshua was so, so disappointed. And yet God told Joshua what to do. And they found out Achan and his family and all his possessions. All that they just you know uh, heap stones you know they they gave him the penalty of death and all his family and and so to remove that they had to clean everything because the people of God was affected third thing and this is the last thing sin can be rectified by repentance Verse 9, last part, thou hast done deeds unto me that ought not to be done. When we realize, as the prodigal son, we say, realize that he sinned against seven and against his, against his father. He came back, you know, and he said, I am not worthy anymore to be called his son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he confessed his sins. The Bible says, if we confess our sins to God, you know, from our heart, he is just and faithful to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The beauty of this is this. Yes, the penalty of sin is death, and yet the free gift of God, His grace, is eternal life to Jesus Christ. And you can ask Him to forgive you of your sin. Can you pray with me right now if you feel that you would like to be forgiven of your sins? Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I ask forgiveness of my sins. Cleanse me. And I invite you as my Lord and Savior, guide me and transform me to the kind of person you want me to be so that I'll be a positive influence in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you today.